This conference will now be recorded. I'm like good afternoon. Uh, it's me, Ashraf Reza from Business Development and also Beam Implementation of Graphisoft, focusing on English uh, market. So uh, to, together with me also today will be uh, Ricky Fix from Director of VRPD. So both of us can will be start do some uh, what are, uh, presentation about uh, interactive scheduling with Cat. So uh, after the first session will be done by me, the second session will be done by Ricky. Then after that, we can go to the Q&A session. Then after that, uh, we will be end the webinar. Yeah, before that, can you see my screen now? No. Yes, yes we can see it. Yeah, exactly. Scheduling with Archicad. Okay. All right. So, this session has been uh, developed de developed to explore area of the interactive scheduling function in Archicad, and it's idea for people who understand modeling and documentation. But uh, uh, but are looking uh, to achieve more in terms of the automation and ultimately leverage leverage the data in our building information model. Um, by the end of this session, I think you will be comfortable with the uh, scheduling option available in Archicad. Uh, select the relevant data, export the full formatting capability uh, on the interactive scheduling function in Archicad. So I think uh, I just go straight away to the slide. So I, uh, most, maybe some of you already know Archicad or play around with that Archicad only already, right? Um, but some is not. But mainly the modeling in Akika is easy. But extracting valuable BIM data from our model takes an extra level of knowledge. Uh, re we can referring back to this image. You can increase the detail level of model. And in some cases, it is necessary, uh, but as well, uh, good strategy to combine model detailness with the richness of information put into the BIM database. So this uh, combination of these two provide you the necessary level of development. And this is what we address in Akik. Unfortunately, um, the work and effort that you put in the model is just half actually of the story. So uh, we don't do anything greater to the world if we only enhance the authoring part of the BIM workflow. So we have to deal with the data access. So data access is important for you to, uh, you know, to, to, to create something or do something or in terms of the scheduling or report based on what you need. So um, normally uh, when you play around with the scheduling right, or you, play, uh, you do something tweaking in the scheduling, we will uh, create the door or window schedule, even the fitting of the object in the our be model. Uh, what we can do more? So I can give uh, an example before that. Uh, the eye centers on the beam uh, means in information. So talking about the information, it's a set of information came directly from the 3D model, right? So, uh, combining that data with human logic will provide you to describe the building in entirety. So this is basically you can do in a cat uh, by using expression based properties. So uh, you can create a new database from the BIM database. Uh, later I will show you how you can play around or do with this property. Uh, now I will show some uh, live demo as an example. So I will open my now. Okay. So you can see a screen now. This uh, maybe you can reply if you see the screen. I just switch to Archicad. Yes, we can yes. see Archicad. Yes. Okay. So I, I uh, after this first I will show. From the missing model, you can what you can extract from the missing model. After that, we can go to the detail model. Okay, we will start from the missing model first. So this is one of the example. I just create some um, element uh, using morphs 
to create some uh, messy model of the maybe the design of the building with the block of uh, by color by red uh, you know uh, black blue and yellow to re refer as a building right so from here i can uh, actually uh, from this moth you can see a lot of information that you can get from here like let's say and the classification right uh, you can have the you know the the detail from the classification and properties you can see uh, some of the information is generated by that but how about the things that is not there that we want to create some of the new things like uh, the uh, you know the area of the building to achieve the cfa of the building automatically right so what i'm gonna do now uh, i can i will go to the here and the organizer then i will click this schedule schedule okay then from here i can uh, just under element i just create a new schedule called uh, maybe cfa right cfa okay then oh i have that maybe like cfa2 okay so from here uh because the model uh, I have now is uh, from morph, right? So I will use under criteria, I will select the morph. Okay. Then what I'm going to do now, I will put uh, the some of the related data, beam data from the model. Let's say now I want to have the, the story of the, the, the floor, story of the building, right? So I just uh, take this home story name you can just uh, drag or you can just double click it will go directly to the field here so this field here uh, later will be reflected to your schedule okay. so another thing i want to put maybe the what called the area by sorry of the move okay I just double click there then uh, maybe i put also the id the element id of the building uh, because I use element ID to recognize the building is referred to which building. Then uh, maybe I click OK. We check, we check the, the drawing, uh, the schedule first. So under element, I will. Uh, sorry, I don't know. I don't know if I'm the only one hearing you with a bit of interference. Can you try to off your camera to see if the the bandwidth is better for? Let me see, because I try to open the camera. Can you see me now? No, off the camera, off the camera. Just... Okay. So, yeah, so generally, the, camera yeah. the camera is still on. So, if you turn off, maybe the uh, sound is better. Okay, sure. Maybe I just turn off yeah, my thanks. camera, okay? Yeah, yeah, maybe All the right. sound is better. Okay. Thank you. Okay, sorry. Uh, okay, I will go back to the what call to the schedule here. Sorry. Okay, so what we generate now is uh, the element ID. So I just classified that the building is by, uh, you know, building A, B, C, D, or they have some morph there that we can, uh, you know, uh, rename that letter with the story automatically and the area of story okay but I, I want to do some tweak here so i just uh maybe uh show the headline and then merge the merge uh uniform item that uh, have a same item of the uh, building so now we uh we have the list of the building here but what i'm gonna do now i want to put more maybe i want to put the because i want to know this building is referred to which uh, you know building right so I already label it by the by color, so I just find the isonometry zono view. Okay, with the zono view, then I will drag it to here yeah, the under the uh, after the, uh, before the element ID and click OK. So I know already this building, this list of building is referred to which one, right? Another one I want to put is the uh, what I call the maybe the sum of the area okay then i want to here yeah, this one i want to make it 
the home story happens to be the RS one uh, will be below and until the top one is supposed to be the the RS uh, no, the, the top the top one lah. the you see like this one uh, increase from the RS Tana go up to the RS seven okay then I will do some tweak to make our uh, schedule more nicely to see okay. Okay, now what you can see now automatically I can get the area of the model that we have in 3D uh, view right in ArchiCAD. So total area is 2150 meters square. So if I go back to the, to the 3D model, okay, let's say somehow I want to do some changes, right? Let's say this the blue one I want to increase. I want to increase it to from the current floor to the more to our spot. Then I want to make some changes here. Let's say I want to do some quick in terms of the design, something like no, flare. Make a there. So the idea is the floor plan is supposed to be uh, change right so then from here also maybe i want to increase the the what you call the the offset to more to maybe five thousand okay like that. if i go back to the schedule you can see now the 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 area automatically change right okay that's the area, area. But how about I want to uh, do something like, you know, normally uh, I, when we do the submission, like, we want to show not only the unit, not only on meter square, but also maybe the square feet, what you can do. So uh, in Nakikat here, what you can do is under here, you can uh, under option property manager, you can play around with the uh, formula that the normal uh, mathematical formula formula that you find uh, before. Then you can create a new we call that uh, classification or rule or property for the specific element. So now maybe I want to create uh, some thing like uh, uh, you know a meter square to basic means the converter right. Let me see. Uh, and I will put this as under generating this here. Okay. So automatically in under generating, you can see meter square to square feet. So uh, maybe I want to move back to the top. And I want to create something like, uh, you know, formula. This is simple formula. So the idea is I will click this expression. And I will, I will find the, the, the related information. Like now we're using uh you know area the moth area by story like is under here okay so i will take this one area by story then i uh, will times two uh what was the you know um uh the formula to to change from the meter meter square to square feet can you help me yes uh why for the we need to times from meter square to square feet 10 point okay, right? okay let's say 10.73 let's say uh, the, 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 the uh, from here after do that then in ticket because this uh this uh, uh what call link of the database is actually is an area right so you need to convert to uh, some uh, to the string first, then convert to numbers to use the the what I call the operator or uh, multiply operator. So what I can do is I can go under data conversion and click the uh, what I call the current uh, uh, data to string first. Okay. Okay. Then go back here to put the. This is just missing. We go back, put to here back. Then after that, I will convert again to numbers because 
the data type that I use now is a uh, numbers. Okay, so just go to here and set as a numbers. Okay, now you can see now the function is okay now. Uh, please make sure, make sure to remember the the, the converter is meter square to square feet right? the, and the number. And then I click OK. So after that, under skin setting, I can add a new uh, property that we already created now. So and here, here is supposed to have a meter square to square feet. Yeah. Right? Then I can jump to maybe here, OK. Set sum also. And click OK. They have some problem there, right? So you can check back again why. Yeah, I know why because we didn't set the classification yet. So I just set the set the classification as all, then click OK. Now you can get now the let's say instead of the example, right? From the meter square, we are already using the formula based on the expression that we set, convert this to square feet. So for the one table, you can have both units, meter square and square feet. And then the thing that you can do is I can just highlight here. I can say there's here this area, meter square. You can just rename it back, something like that. And this one also, I will rename this area as a square feet. Okay. So you can see now I have two units now, right? Okay, this is the first part. So uh, what we can do next? Okay, what I want to do now, I want to multiply this area by rate. So before that, I will uh, maybe create a new rate or I just create the rate already under here. So I will use this uh, maybe mm, this one, rate meter square let me let check okay this one red per meter square the similar thing that i used before so i use the same thing create the rate per meter square and then click okay okay now i have the the rate per meter square okay next i'm gonna do is i will times this rate with the area by meter square here to get the total rate what i'm gonna do is I will go to the property manager again. Then I will create a new property manager called maybe uh, total cost. Okay. Uh, what is total cost? Okay, I said something like that. Okay. Cost. So, of course, a similar thing. Uh, I just make sure the classification is all we want to select all inform our uh, element that we have to recognize the this uh, property that they can use to uh, you know apply to the schedule then i will change the data type to numbers after that under expression what i'm going to do is if you remember we already create the the what called parameter before under properties generating we have this meter square to square feet, right? But what I'm going to do is I will use the, the original one because we renamed that as a by meter square, right? So I just find the most area by story. Double click this one. Okay. After that, what I'm going to do is I want to times this area by story by rate. So go back to here. Under uh, rate by meter square, this one, double click. Automatically we go here, right? But okay, like I say, this area by sorry is still under area with the, the data with uh what call data value is a by area. We need to convert to the string and convert to, to the number to, to 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 do the you know to do the calculation. So similar thing, I just from here I can under here you can see they have uh, some uh, you know, from uh, uh, default things that you can use from here based on what you need. Now I want to do the data conversion from the area. I want to convert to string, okay? And okay, I convert to string. Then from the string, I want to 
convert the data to numbers because the data type that we use now is the numbers. Okay. Okay, just delete it. Then just put uh you know, in here. Okay. Then click okay. Um it's I think everything is okay now. Just click okay. Then under scheme setting, I will put the another field, you know, the one that we created before. And uh, uh, here, this total profit. Okay, it's supposed to be the, the last one and click OK. So you can see now the total cost here is turned to, to the this one times to the 150. Uh, we, we can check before that. Then we can do some the thing purpose 150 by 200 supposed to be get this one right okay so how about uh you know some maybe i do some changes you know uh maybe i go back to to the video to see okay how about in here let's select this move when i go to the setting of the mouse you can see here also they have uh you can see the what the property here also they have things that we already created before you see like this one right okay so let we go back to the schedule okay i need to click the schedule uh the fa to the one that we created okay uh, we this one okay. so let's say how about if i change the rate here no uh, let me check why it's not changed maybe i just try to click this one then okay how about i just change from rate 200 to maybe 250 okay. you can see now it changed already to but no 400 400 and 2000 uh, ringgit right. so the idea is this times the area then you can get the cost okay and also you can do a lot of more like you know you can click around if you want to make some adjustment let's see now this area is perfect, right i want to make it the the database is you no know, more more to the left side or right side then maybe I can zoom out a little bit um, to 70%. So you can see now the total, even the total cost here there. Uh, okay. Maybe also I want to, because uh, maybe I, would, I go back to the 3D view. Okay. Yeah. How about I will just create a new one? Let's say I just pick up a new um, setting of the morph here. Maybe I want to change this to another type of color, maybe to the textile here, yeah, this one, right? And maybe I want to make a new missing model, another missing model. If they are sometimes 50,000. And the height is supposed to be, maybe I want to put until the RS, maybe RS4, yeah? Then I want to rename this as a uh, bangunan, maybe gembangunan E, okay? And click OK. So if I go back to the schedule, you can see now I have a new schedule for bangunan E. You see here? Until RS Tanah to RS3, right? With the proper, you know, uh, things that we already set as a preset. So you can imagine now if you have a template of schedule that you have, then you can reapply or reuse it just put something from the property then you can get your result there this is one of the example here okay uh i think i have some question maybe you can go to the a session after this okay uh another type how about we go to now i want to choose the detail design let's say i have something like this uh, the model with the you know, door windows uh, we will build the wall there with the glass door there and have a cantilever slab. So, what I'm going to do now, same thing, what you can do is if I go to the schedule, uh, 
I just create a new walls of the year. Then it should be set already that I've done before. So you can see now, you can even do the same thing. Uh, you know, uh, under skin setting, you can put related information that you want from the model. Let's say now, like I have to home story, element ID. I want to recognize that this uh, wall refer to which one, right? And the position, you know, even I already create some property for to get the cost of the building. You see now, yeah? Of course, this, this uh, table is for the wall cost only. Means uh, I already uh, defined that uh, position of the wall, interior, exterior, you know? Uh, and also the building material of the wall there, you see? Uh, and after that, I will create a new property that use, uh, you know, the area of the wall times rate of per square meter of the wall. You see now, I just set up this as a nine uh, ringgit per meter square, right? How about I've just changed this to maybe 13 ringgit per meter square? You can see uh, instantly it will change in terms of the total cost there. Then it will, it will reflect it until to get the total cost of the overall building. Now it's about 60,045 ringgit and 30 cents total. Maybe the rate is not right. <laughs> I think there's no better in terms of the rate. But uh, what I'm going to show you, what you can manipulate from the schedule to, to, to achieve uh, you know, certain things like the cost of the building. Uh, same thing, let's say now I, I try to do some changes before that we go back to the cost. You can see now the cost is uh, 16,382, right? So I go back to the model, then maybe I want to do some changes. Let's say maybe I want to add a new uh, wall here, you know, something like that. The brick wall, yeah, maybe uh, all right. Okay. Then I want to also do some glass uh, glass wall here inside as a partition. Let's see, like that. maybe something like that one, this one. Okay. So the idea is, of course, the wall is supposed to be increased right? in terms of the uh, like quantity. Uh, uh, right? Then maybe I want to do some tweak in terms of the um like uh, design here you don't want to make some um, thing here this wall supposed to be glass we cannot bend the glass i want to change the material to brick okay then click okay okay then what i'm gonna do is uh, maybe i want to do some trick i want to i don't want the uh, you know the wall turn to like that we just wall this something like that. Then we have to deliver the So after that, I go back to the cost on the wall. Then you can see the price in uh, automatically uh, reflected to the schedule here. Okay. So you can imagine that you can from the three D model. If, if you have a proper three D model, then if you have a proper schedule with the proper property that you already created, then you can even use the schedule to you know, create some uh, quantity take off from the model itself directly from Archicad. And another things that you can do is from the, in terms of the import export, right? I can just go to the file, save as, then uh, save file to the, any document or Excel or you know even the PDF, let's say now I just save to Excel and save. So you can see, uh, let me open the file um, under session three, okay. So automatically I will have this, uh, what I call table, so to be this wall cost table, if I double click that, you can see it already transfer as an Excel. So now you can do more from the, uh, from, from the table to do some changes or what, you know? So this is like, uh, it's, it's very easy in terms of the import and export to another type of the file. So I get, I think we have a bit much big, uh, which that's, that's the, the general things that I want to show. Then now I want to pass the session to Ricky. Okay. Uh, so Ricky, are you ready? 
Yes, ready, ready to go. go. Uh, did you do a presentation? Yeah, I make you presenter, Ricky. Okay. Thanks, Astra. Okay, Ricky, so. you're in the middle of the nature. <laughs> <laughs> go ahead, mate. Can you see my screen? Yes, yes, you're on. Okay, Thank and you. I'm clear. Yep. Okay. Thank you, Ashraf and Grafisoft for inviting me to present this afternoon. Uh, also, thank you to all the participants who have dialed in during your lunch break. Uh, my name is Ricky Fritz. I'm an architect by training, and I've been using Archicad since version 4.5. Uh, I provide design, visual, visualization, and BIM solution services for architects, developers, and contractors, and I'm currently the only Grafisoft certified BIM manager in Malaysia. Um, I might turn my webcam off since there seems to be some uh, lagging effects and then you just have to listen to my voice, unfortunately. Um, this afternoon I'll be providing a brief live demo of some interactive schedules used in our projects. I'll be sharing some schedule setup considerations and useful functions that schedules can be used to extend the capabilities of listing in ARCHICAD including auto coding, um, quality assurance and quality control and estimating. So I've been told the audience today is um, not only designers and architects, but also other key construction um, industry participants that have a range of ARCHICAD knowledge from potential and newbies all the way to experienced users. So welcome to all and I hope to be able to share some knowledge and experience and engage with you later um, during the Q&A. Okay, so when we're working through the um, schedules, as Ashraf um, demonstrated, um, there's many ways of being able to um, f filter out the uh, information that you're getting from all your building elements. So one of the main um, methods that we use to do that is via classifications. And classifications can be like a uni-class, master format, uh, omni-class, or can be other um, country or industry specific um, classifications. So in the schedules that we um, typically generate, there's two types. First one we call as output, which is normally schedules that you put into your layouts or you export as um, schedules um, or spreadsheets to other parties for their information so that they can um, add in their own respective data that they're responsible for. The other type of schedule that we create is the quality assurance and quality control uh, schedules. So these are used to validate the data and the information that you've associated to each of the building elements in the BIM and to make sure that this information is consistent with your project information requirements and that all the fields that need information actually do have the information and that nothing is missing. Um, so the quality assurance um, schedules are also useful to help us to interrogate the model if you like to um, find the needle in the haystack for the, any elements that may be problematic in one way or the other. So um, the first model that I'll show is a recent project that we completed. Um, so it's a industrial type building, um, basically has concrete flooring, some pad footings, um, some cladding, and also it's made of a structural steel frame. Um, so the, the client required quite detailed element listing for costing, um, but also for fabrication and for construction processes. Um, so we set up the ARCHICAD project template, which consists of a suite of schedules, um, a few of which I'll show you um, today. So the first one, sorry, I got my screen in the way. Okay, so as I mentioned before, the, we use classifications to um, define what type of um, uh, element a building element is and so if you can see in the sp spreadsheet on the screen so we have a, a couple of uh, columns here so the hot link id is useful when you're hot linking um, other, other models or external files into your project and this allows you to identify if the elements are in your current project, uh, in the current project that you're working on, or you need to make any changes, you need to go to those external files and make those changes there. Um, so th this uh, quality um, assurance schedule that we set up here is just to check that all the elements have a classification assigned. So basically we need everything to have a, um, a classification um, defined. 
and if any don't have, they'll show up here as undefined um, in the schedule. And send, since we're talking about interactive schedules here, we can go in and um, interactively uh, define what the classification should be. So the reason that we keep the element ID and the layer and the element type is that we can help identify what that element is quite easily. So from these fields here, we can quite easily tell that it's a beam. So we can click in here and then just start typing in what we think it should be, double click on it, and it will update the model to show that that model is now a beam and then it should come back um, as you see here. Okay, so the next um, schedule I'll show quickly is just to um, highlight how the classifications allow you to filter out uh, where you need information and where it's not necessary. So you'll see in the first line here, um, we have a, a beam, um, the, the first column is actually a code, which I'll explain um, in subsequent slides. Um, but in the, uh, what you can see in the fields here, so say for beams, the client for this project only wanted um, information for costing um, by beams, which were by piece, which is um, basically the installation or labor component, and then the cost per meter run, which is the material cost. So for the beams, we don't actually need um, the field meter squared or meter cube. Um, that, that's not how we measure um, the beam. So the triple dash indicates that there's no data required for, for that field. So it makes it quite easy for you to see, um, like in the first row, it's all been undefined. So we can see that th this one needs attention and we need to work on um, those elements. Okay. So uh, next I'll change over to another project. Um, this one I've done as a very simple um, massing model, similar to what um, um, Ashraf's shown with the morph tool. Um, but this one we're using zones. So uh, just open it up so you can see what I'm talking about. So we have a um, basically a fl floor plan here. It's a ground floor and the first floor area for a um, two-story house. Uh, just show you 3D, get an idea of what I'm talking about. Um, so basically, this is just uh, zones because we're in the preliminary stages of the project. Um, I've turned off the internal layouts um, just to help focus on what we're talking about here. So um, yeah, the, the schedule that we've created, which I'll pull up now, um, the user's properties that we've assigned to the zones um, and that these will uh, define and calculate the estimated construction cost. So um, the cost that you, so you see in the, um, the columns here, we have the zone, which was separated by floor, um, the calculated area. Um, and then this building type is what you'd probably call the um, specification of the building. So if I click on this, you'll see a pre number of preset um, factors that you can um, input, which we have put in as, as a property. So, you know, often if this is a one-off house, you have the client that says, yes, I want number one, everything to be fantastic and higher spec and everything. And you'll see just now that the um, th this is basically a, a cost um, <laughs> that will cost them to, um, to build at that, that size and also at that specification. So you can see down here, the total cost is almost 1.4 million. So um, if that blows the budget, then they've got two choices. They can either reduce the, um, the spec of their project, or obviously they need to reduce the built up area. And so if you change the, um, the building specification there, and then we rebuild the schedule, then you'll see the cost come down to just over a million, which may be more um, useful, uh, more affordable for, for the client. So. These, the data that you see in the um, cost per meter squared is, um, for, for us, we basically uh, extract that information from the industry reports that the project consultants um, publish every year. And we, we use that just to get um, like a, a QS estimation. So as you can see in here, we've got a list of different types of residential, um, offices, hotels, factories, car parks, and institutional kind of elements. So the building type here is a property similar to what um, Ashraf was showing. So I can show you the um, building type here, which we have as an option set. So in the option setup, you actually predefine 
what are the actual um, elements, uh, the different options that you have um, for that. And then from there, we um, have the cost of the um, each type hard coded in. Uh, we, the reason we hard coded in is it's um, basically we update it every year along with the template file that, that we create. So the reports come out every year and then um, for us, the, the building prices don't fluctuate that, that much, so we can actually use um, a hard-coded value. But um, if you're another company that needs to change it um, quite regularly, we can link that into a, um, an, another set of um, prop properties that you can also update. Okay. Uh, and then also, if, if you need, do need to, you can also override these values in here. Um, so it's not a, a part of the defined um, uh, prop property set that you see there. <clears throat> okay, what you're doing is like a ratio between those two values, right? It's like the area plus the times the cost per square meter. Correct. That's right. Yeah. So yeah. Um, Interesting. the only thing to be careful of is if you change the, um, the uh, building type or the construction spec, and you've um, overridden the um, right. building type, you'll need to go back into the zone and set it back to default so that it does it yeah. based on the expression, not on that one. So that's just something to look out for. So as you would expect, okay. if you change the, the footprint size, obviously the area changes and all that updates. So I won't go through all that since we're quite limited on time for that. So um, yeah, just one more thing about the, having a quite a range that's available. Um, th this is quite useful for if you have mixed use developments or um, planning projects where you need to play with the mix of um, uh, what, what you're offering as a developer or as an, uh, as an architect in your proposal. Um, and then this gives a, a very good idea of like total construction costs. And then on that, you can add on um, other formulas to say what you'd sell it for um, and then use that as a business case scenario. So this is slightly more accessible, I guess, to some people as compared to um, integrating with something like the Rhino and Grasshopper plugin um, in that you can do it all within um, Archicad, but obviously there's um, a little bit more um, work that you need to do to um, make any of those changes. It's not so automatic as the Grasshopper connection there. Okay, so next item we'll talk about quickly is the auto coding of the building elements. So for the, um, again, we do get these codes, which you saw in the previous um, slides. And the um, auto coding also helps to work out the quality assurance checking to make sure that the code is um, correct. So I'll just pull up a uh, the schedule for us. And then you can see what I'm talking about. So all these schedules interrogating the, the model each time they're generated and they have to see what um, it filters out, go, goes through all the elements and groups them if they're all the same type. So that's why we have these totals here of like 18 all grouped together. So there's actually 18 elements there. So you'll see in this, again, we have the hot link so we can identify if they're external objects. The um, code here is, um, as I mentioned, uh, made up of a number of different properties as you see along here. So the first part is the element ID, which we use to help identify what the element is. And then we have the specification properties, which is the material and the structure type. Um, following that, you see the X and Y dimension, which is the profile dimensions, and then the thickness of the structural steel, and then also the structural length. So the structural length is what is actually modeled in your building. It's not the what comes from the factory. So all these lengths here are shown um, relate physically to what you are building and what you're proposing to build. So as you can see, if you, I think, is that clear enough? Can you see the code in, on your screens all right? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. It's okay. So you want to see here the BMF is the first part, then GI, which is here, um, the material, then 2C, then you see the elements there. So the last four columns that we have are more for the quality side, excuse me, um, so that you can, again, identify any of these elements that are um, maybe causing issues, like we have one up here, which is has undefined, like something is not quite correct. And you can, using this um, schedule, um, this is like the, the in-house schedule. So this is not what you'd publish out to 
um, your consultants or anyone else. This is for you to check the integrity of your BIM. So here you can say the, see the material hasn't been defined, the structure type hasn't been defined, and even the thickness hasn't been defined. So this one returns an error saying, sorry, you can't generate a code because these elements um, are missing. Um, so like with the web thickness here, we can go in and define something so that will make it happy that way. But then we also have to change these other elements as well, which we can also do. Um, so even though I've updated one, it still says it's undefined because we have these elements missing. And again, things like some, some of the elements, um, you can key in a manual um, size. Other elements um, we've done as an option set as well. So same as what I showed you um, previously, um, we have the option set <clears throat> shown here. So in terms of like for structural components, basically it has two advantages of doing it as an option set in that um, the values that the, um, are chosen are actually available on the production side. Um, and it also reduces the chance of errors. So example, if you miss a, a decimal point, for example, or you type in a number that's not totally in, incorrect, um, it, um, it basically um, helps to um, reduce the amount of errors that um, are possible uh, in, in the BIM. Okay. So next element we'll look at is the um, costs. I think we've gone through quite a bit with um, Ashraf, so I won't do spend too long on that one, but I'll just pull up the schedule for you <clears throat> um, because it leads into the, to the next slide that I want to show you. So the schedule here basically is um, ordered by the element ID, which identifies kind of where the um, element belongs and what it's being used for. Um, so we are, again, we are using the code. We have the length, the quantity, cost per piece, and also the cost per meter run. So if you do the calculations, you'll see they all sort of um, add up. And then the the subtotal, so the cost subtotal on the right here is the total for one of these elements. So if you, uh, we have 18 here, and then all of those, the cumulative quantity here is all added in here to give you this larger sum here. And then of course, at the bottom, you have the grand total of all the elements together. Um, so uh, using the schedule like this is quite good to go in and that you can change the um, uh, any any of these values if you need to, and you can also check that the unit of um, measurement is is correct. Okay, so with the pricing elements, um, uh, I'll pull up the schedule so you can see it. So you can see. What I'm talking about as well. So this is a more simplified schedule that um, only lists each individual building element um, of a certain type and specification. So you'll see if the list here is quite reduced. Um, basically, it's only listing everything that um, if there's um, one type of it, it's all linked together. So it could be a beam for a floor or a wall or something else. But since it has the same code, it will um, all be grouped together. And the reason we do it in this um, as a quality um, schedule is that it allows you to go in and change each um, individual spec specified um, building element um, just once. Whereas if you refer back to the, so if I go in here, I change the, the building cost and then all of these 12 elements will automatically be updated um, in, the, in the BIM. So if you go back to the um, previous schedule, um, you'll see that you'll actually have the same specification here, <clears throat> excuse me, um, but it's based on, um, it, it's, it's linked, it, because we've um, separated it by element ID for one of the client's purposes, um, you'll have to actually go in and change it multiple times. Whereas since if we're using this um, other schedule where we've combined everything together, you just change that price once and it's it's done uh, one time. So sometimes when our clients see the number of schedules that we uh, produce, they can be a bit overwhelmed. However, um, hopefully, as you can see, each schedule has a distinct purpose and uh, most are actually involved in quality assurance and making editing of the BIM elements as straightforward as possible with minimal repetitive work. And uh, as, as you know, um, 
all, all of these types of information can also be exported out to uh, external spreadsheet applications as well as, as, as Ashraf showed you um, to, um, for further editing or input from other consultants um, as part of your team. All right, so the next two schedules are just quick ones to show you the um, uh, prefabricated items. So this one was part of the fabrication. Um, so the code that you saw previously is what the fab fabrication side of the company uses. And, and they use that to um, identify what they need to produce to get sent out to site later on. So they have the design side, then the manufacturing side or the production fabrication, and then the construction. So uh, what we urged them to do was to have all the codes consistent throughout from beginning to end so that any communication between the different parties, um, you know, they're all talking about the same elements um, and that speeds up the production time on site in the production yard and even in the design field when they need to um, troubleshoot any issues. So the schedule is based on the client's requirements. So we have, again, we have the code, um, some additional columns, which uh, the uh, software takes and adds additional information into. Uh, again, the specification, so we know what type of material it is. Um, a double check on what the dimensions are. Um, and then and the other one is the quantities. And the last two items that we use as the just as a quality assurance um, for, for the company as well to check off um, items that are already fabricated and if they've been sent off site to go to the construction site. So these two columns can either be a, a Boolean, like a true or false, if it's been done or not, or you can actually import a date value as well so that you have a progress tracking and you can output the schedules at set points so you can see the progress over time um, and see how that goes. And then the next one was also for the construction side. So I'll just show that quickly. So the, similar to the previous two, we have the code, but you'll notice here that the, um, the main organizing um, field here is the location or the zone where each of these ele building elements um, needs to go on the construction site. So this one gives the location so that it's quite easy for um, when items are being delivered to site, they can be put in the, in the correct location. You can imagine some building sites are like 100, 200 meters long from one end of the building to the other. And so if everything's been plonked at one end or at the wrong end, um, you're gonna spend a lot more time transporting materials on site and wasting time. So if you can coordinate that so that you, um, when the materials first come onto site, you can put them in the right location, then you're ready to go and get onto the next um, stage of which is, um, uh, you know, basically building the um, project. Okay, so the last couple of things I just need to show, just two more slides, I promise. Uh, first one is the, for this one, we, um, so as with other schedules, the properties are used to assign and define the data. Um, and the thing to remember while watching this presentation is that this is all set up um, and uh, assigning should mostly be done in your office template file. So in this way, the Archicad users in your firm that basically need to do the production side, um, that all they need to do is select their predefined favorites or hot links or library parts, and they can get on with the design and the modeling and the production. So um, in the first of these schedules, I set up a um, construction status. So I just flip over to Archicad. Okay, how are we going for time? So we have a... We'll start uh, a bit later, so. Okay, I'll try to wrap up quickly. Um, yeah, yeah. So no, hopefully no we'll rush. stay on for another five, five minutes. Uh, so this is basically a, a two-story um, building, made it very simple just so we can um, understand what I'm showing you here. Um, so the first part is, and this can be any um, projects, so like housing or whatever. So the building progress, we want to show um, how things are progressing, like for incremental um, payments and things like that. So what we've done here is whatever elements are completed on site are indicated in green. Uh, items in progress are yellow. Future elements are in um, blue so and also in a wireframe mode. And anything that has been completed but it's um, somehow defective um, is high red. 
So we're using a graphic override here to um, to help show that visually, um, which you can also use in your reports when you're reporting back to your clients. So coming back to schedules, which is the topic of today. Um, so as you, you can see, I think in the schedule here, uh, just zoom that back out a bit, that's clear enough. So yeah, uh, this one we all organize by floor because that's how, normally how the um, uh, construction starts. You know, we start in the footings and move up. And then uh, the element ID is again to help identify which element is you're assigning a status to. So the, the status here is interactive and we have a number of preset elements. So work in progress is when you're designing before you've actually started construction. Um, later on, once you've it's been confirmed, you go into the next one. Uh, as you see, the yellow columns are in progress if they're completed and then if they're defective as well. Uh, and then it lumps together the same item. So that's what we see there. Okay, so um, any of these elements, again, you can use these graphic overrides to um, go through the, the building and highlight which elements are defective. And you can also see in the floor plans, you know, which elements are in progress and which ones are still coming. So we have the, the next schedule here, which um, gives a bit more detail about, you know, what, what is the problem with the defect. So you can actually type this in and give a bit more information about what this is. So again, this using quality assurance, this schedule shows everything in, in the model. So by rights, everything should not be defective, but anything that is defective will, will be flagged up here. And we just have to go in and type in, you know, what, what the, the problem is. So this one is like, like I mentioned, is an in-house schedule. And anything that you want to send out to the um, contractor or report back to your client is you'd use a more simplified um, schedule like this one, which only highlights where the defects are, so they can drill down and focus on, you know, th those elements which are um, problematic. You know, you imagine if you pass this one to the contractor, then you have to be sure that they've gone through and selected, checked every single element which is defective, and see what the problem is, and then address it. So, using BIM is all about trying to be more productive and um, minimize repetitive work, and also being clear about what what your um, reporting to people. So next element here, last one, is um, related to well, in Malaysia as part of the Housing Board Association um, Schedule G or H, depending on the type of project, where the architects are responsible for doing the certification of um, payments. So you need to make sure that everything is um, being completed properly and you need a way of tracking that as well. So in the 3D view here, graphic overrides to make sure that all the elements in the building have been assigned to a certain building stage. So um, you can see the different color coding in here. And then again, anything in red is like a red flag to say these haven't been assigned. So what we can do is you, you select the element that's the problem, and then you go into your settings and you can see whichever um, housing project stage it needs to be on. So it needs to be 2D in the roofing turn that on and you'll see it changes the, um, the, the color representation. So again, you have the um, graphic overrides which you use in the floor plan to again, go, go in and modify your um, uh, elements. And this is another visual aid to see everything that has been assigned has become clear and then you can see more clearly which ones are a problem. So coming over to the schedules, so again, it's all about ordering. How do you order your uh, schedules? Let me just try to make that not too big. So this one, the main ordering system is the, the certification stage. So 2A is uh, foundations and footings. Next one is the reinforced concrete structure. So as you can see, the footings is all completed. Um, the reinforced concrete structure, we can see that some of it's completed, um, but so other elements are still um, in progress and haven't even been started yet. So as an architect, if you're responsible for signing that off, you'd want to see all of these fields um, completed. And once only once they're all completed, then you can um, sign off and certify that stage. Obviously, anything defective needs to be addressed um, in, in another area. So um, yeah, we're quite excited to be able to use um, as part of some future development um, to integrate this with um, the Archicad um, API and Python script so that 
we can actually use these in um, BIMX as well when we're on site. So any um, reporting or checking that we're doing on site, we can import that using the BIMX um, software. And then th that one can be linked to a, on a cloud um, schedule, which will also update um, your ArchiCAD model in, in one shot. So you don't need to do one, one lot of checking on site and then importing that data into your BIM back at the office. It gets it done live um, over the cloud. So um, we're working on um, developing something like that, which should be quite exciting to do. Um, finally, as a workflow consideration, um, when you're maintaining progress reports of the project, um, these can be done by publishing reports at certain um, times in the throughout the project, or else you can actually archive your um, your project at at those points as well. So. Um, yeah, setting up and testing the schedules that you require in your practice or your business is the is the hard part, really. Um, once you've adequately tested the schedules and you're satisfied they deliver the information that you need, the the schedules can, like I said, need to be in included in your template file. Or if there if there's too many um, that make it a bit cumbersome, that then you know so some schedules you don't need for every type of project. So what you can do is save the schedule and the properties even as an XML file and store them in an external um, folder or directory and you just import them as and when you need them in your ArchiCAD projects. Um, yeah, so the QA and QC schedules are just one way to validate the integrity of your BIM. Other methods include, as you saw, the graphic overrides in 2D and 3D views. Um, so yeah, as part of our services, we work to understand your, your BIM needs and requirements and help to set up templates, schedules, and library parts and other features within ArchiCAD to improve your productivity and the quality of your deliverables. So I hope this brief demo was interesting and engaging enough for the audience today. And I'll now hand back over to Ashraf. Thank you. Thank you, Great, great presentation showing a lot of uh, ways how we can take advantage of the scheduling and, and and the power of information on BIM. So we have a few questions here. Gary is asking, how do you manage uh, element IDs when you have a building with so many elements? Do you use the uh, uh, ID manager or or you just uh, have it like, let's say on the favorite and then you keep increment them and then you, you control on the schedule? Yeah, yeah I mean, Gary is asking about the numbering. Yeah, it depends on the thing, the element ID manager. Yeah, it's something you need to use. Um, and then I, yeah, we use schedules extensively as well, just to visually go through and, and check that as well. Um, yeah, the, the management of the IDs is, is something that's always can be quite challenging. Um, what we've found there's some, we do find some issues with using favorites as well in that the element ID is not linked in um, directly with the favorite. Um, uh, even if it's starting at a, you know, like in, in, in this case, a beam 001, as you create more, yeah, it increments it up. But um, in the favorite, somehow the, we found that, that there's, there maybe our installation, but there's some bug there occasionally. So there, there is uh, that, that need to have those quality assurance schedules so that you can check that those element IDs are, are correct. Yes. Yeah. I, I agree. Uh, I, I normally use the the element ID. Um, how do you call that? Let me see. Actually, I think you are. Yeah, the ID <clears throat> manager, so that you can select multiple elements, and if they are the same, I just do a find and select, and if they are the same, then I will just uh, assign the same uh, ID to yeah, them. Yeah, or, or you can use find and filter. You know, find and select. To select a certain you know uh, parameter that we want automatically, yeah. I think yeah, maybe you can I find. find um, uh, yeah, sometimes I find it depends on how you're doing it as well. Like in terms of uh, footings, often the structure has one ID, and the architect will have an, another way of referencing it. And same thing with um, things like beams as well. So especially for reinforced concrete, you know, the engineer will label it each and every. Um, beam out, but sometimes for scheduling purposes, you just want to know that the same, whichever beams have the same physical dimensions in terms of the cross section area, so that you can double check things like rebar placement and things like that. So, 
Um, yeah, it really comes down to the project requirements. Yeah, yeah, I, I agree. Well, so, any question now? I think you can flash you can your, uh, your slides uh, and then we, if we have more questions, we'll go through it. Yeah. Can, can you uh, make me as a presenter? Okay. Please, uh, Marcelo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let me see where you are. I think yeah, we, uh, if you have any yeah. question, you can ask. Yeah, maybe you can open the mic also can. Okay. Uh, if not, then I will go to the last part. Do you have any question? No. Okay. So, uh, up. so uh, I hope this session will be help you uh, to at least to offer is quite uh, something quite deep in terms of the understanding, right? But I think overall you can see the, the I call the benefit of things that you can play around with the schedule, not only to play at the door or window or area schedule, but more than that. So uh, just I want to highlight the next one. We have another last session for this uh, session for session four is a teamwork feature collaboration. I hope you can uh, just scan this QR code and register early because uh, you know like today also I think 60 people uh, registered the session today so if it is it's good if you can register more you know more early and I want to highlight also about the next will be have uh, architect user day uh, webinar so it's supposed to be in it but uh, I will pass the link of the registration letter after I have the link okay uh, you can go to the Graphsel Learn also uh, for the SSA user to see another a lot of things, topics that you can learn from here. And you can also use this scan this QR code to uh, you know to join our social media to the YouTube, Facebook, or LinkedIn. Uh, even the uh, today session also we do the record and post to the YouTube uh, our social media. And the last part, I think I will. Uh, I think uh, uh, we pass to Noria, our uh, you know story seller, Crystal Network. Can can uh, um, if you hear Noria, I think you want to update something. Hello, everybody. Can Hi, you Noria. hear me? Hello. Yes. yes. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Uh, this is Noria. Hi, Noria. Okay. Noria. I think I think most of you know Crystal Network. So I just want to make a, a very important announcement to be there. Thank you to all of you. My business has uh, grown, and due to that, I have to register for the uh, service tax with the customer. So effective from 1st of April 2021, I will have to charge my customers a 6% service tax on top of the ticket price. Any purchase from now to the 1st of March is still zero tax. Okay, I'm sorry about that, but that's, that's business. You know, I, I, I am forced to do that. Thank you so much. Okay. okay. Thanks. Thanks everyone yeah. is considering soon. Uh, now is a good time because then we can't avoid the tax, right? Yeah. Okay. I will be sending uh, uh, the emails so... to all of you to inform about that. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Thank you, Thanks. Thanks, Maria. Uh, okay. last, one last part. I think uh, Gary asking a question also. Uh, Will Akikat develop an easier approach without the use of expression? Maybe you can answer, have to answer, uh, Marcelo? Well, uh, basically, uh, before expressions, I think people were using that. So basically, mm -hmm. you just create a, a, a property and you can key in any time. The, the benefit of expressions is if you you know, even you know a bit more Excel or something like that, you can just uh, jump into um, the formulas and say, let's say that, for example, here in Singapore, we use one rule, which is the opening has to be 10% of the area of the ground floor. So those things that normally we used to go to, to Excel and do that formula, and then key in on, on the schedule manually, now we can do directly. So Gary, pretty much we can do it both ways still. So I like to see that there is um, 
ways that we can get that uh, yeah, in a more uh, complex way or in a more manual way? So, I, I, I think uh, for, from my perspective, this expression actually can, can uh, we can create our, our own custom, uh, you know, uh, information based on what we need by using this expression, not using the generate one. You know, you can manipulate a lot of things from the beam data there. I have another question also. Um, uh, Ashraf, is there a chance to schedule out of polyline from uh, Mr. Mu? Uh, I think, but the polyline, yeah, we cannot schedule the polyline. But right, Marcelo, but yeah. Uh, they have a, a way to 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 get the information of the polyline by using um if uh, what is the right? yes yes within uh, element information yeah you can uh, generate that then you can copy the the what I call the list of uh information there the length or the area from the polyline then copy to uh, manually to the Excel but I think. Currently, they have uh, we cannot do the schedule for polyline. I have a, another question from Gary also. No choice have to learn scripting. Yeah. 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 So basically, yeah. Uh, we can use um, you know many different workflows. Archicad is just a tool, and every year we come out with more and more. Development. So now we can use Python script. Now we can use, uh, you know, uh, Rhino Grasshopper connection. But we try to show in these sessions also that we most of the stuff we can do directly inside here. So it really depends on how much you want to automate your work or how much. Uh, sometimes to automate, you spend ten hours to automate one hour of work, but then you save that one hour of work becomes 10 minutes every time you need to do it. So it really depends how you want to weigh this. I know that you're not a programmer. <laughs> but for example, you can engage with people for that. So I think we have here Jorge. Are you still there, Jorge? So uh, George from Enzyme always does this. So they every time they have something that is very um, uh, repetitive they try to to get that or you can just engage someone let's say you know 10 hours of your work or something that you can reduce from one hour to 10 minutes every time you pay someone you know one or two days of work is a programmer and he come out with that for you so i think most of the times we try to solve everything ourselves as architects or as designers and and i can say this because i'm also an architect myself and i used to think like this but in the long run or if you're a business owner some it makes sense a lot of times to to have an, a more automated solution or even engage an expert for for this kind of thing so it's this is why uh, we have people like ricky presenting here because it's that's one of his focus as well okay so uh, uh if yeah. if nothing else i, I think, think we, we yeah. wrap up the yeah. session here have any question last question please guys if you have any question you can uh you know go outside of the topic also it's okay outsource gary says ricky <laughs> yeah. yeah actually if we have a network of of you know a team you know sometimes we we can leverage on each other's capabilities you know one uh, can be more focused on let's say the design side, another one more focused on the services side and programming. So just the, we get to know each other better and then we can we can leverage on each other's uh, strength. Uh, maybe we can get some Go question ahead. from QS also. Juan Sharifah, SR Sharifah, if you want to ask any question regarding Please. of the schedule quantity, also you can ask if you need. Oh, uh, anyone? I think okay. One, we just count one, two, three. Okay, I think we don't have more question anymore. So I will end the session. So hopefully you can join the session. Uh, the, the next session, the session four. Uh, please register it. Thank you for joining. Hopefully you will free.
fruitful uh, session for you guys. Thank you. Thank you, guys. And I want to thank especially to Ricky for your your great contribution, friend. Thank Bye, you guys. See you yeah. next next week in the next Stay session. Guys. Stay safe. Thank you. Yes. Uh, Stay safe. Thank you. Thank you.